Welcome to Discovering. Tonight we're on a fall backcountry camping trip in the Porcupine Mountains and we're not about to let a little rain or wind slow us down. I'm glad we didn't even think about quitting. So sit back and relax. It's Monday night and it's time for Discovering. The secret streams that flow beneath the cliffs of colored stone. Forest thick and healthy with birch and pine and oak. Surrounded by the greatest lakes this world has ever known. The black bear's awesome presence as he roams the hills and fields. The call of the timber wolf, the loon's lonesome trill. The eagle soaring high above, the trout lies deep and still. These are what I treasure, the only way I measure Feelings that I have for this fine land There is so much to discover When you're a long-time lover of northern Michigan When I set out to do a story about camping in the Porkies, this is what I had in mind, not this. I wanted to show the adventure, the beauty of the UP's backcountry, and how everyone should get outdoors. This story will show all three. We had an adventure. The rain stopped long enough to experience the beauty and wonder of nature, and maybe after seeing this, you might still want to get out here and do this too. This is my first backcountry camping trip. So, what do I need to do first? Research the area that you want to go to. If it's your first time, go with somebody who's been there before. That can kind of be your trail guide. I found the perfect person to do a story with. TV6 morning anchor Elizabeth Peterson, an avid hiker and backcountry camping enthusiast. We decided my first backpacking trip should be in the Porcupine Mountains. This is the first and the only place that I've done a solo hike that I went on my own. And I just immediately really fell in love with this area. I think the trails are challenging enough that you feel like you're um, really working, and yet they're not so challenging that that I can't do it, <laughs> you know, because I'm, I'm not like an expert backpacker by any means, you know. And so for a first time, I think a couple days out here is just a great like way to dip your toes in. So the Porkies is Michigan's largest designated wilderness area. The Porkies is 60,000 acres, and much of this is, is a, a virgin hardwood and a hemlock forest. So in an effort to protect that, we established that you must make a reservation and you must stay on a designated campsite. We have 63 designated campsites in the backcountry, interconnected by 100 miles of hiking trail system. It's very unique. There are not a lot of places in the Midwest, let alone the United States, where you can go from campsite to campsite to campsite, and if you want to have a cabin or yurt in between. 2020 has been the most unusual season at the park, just like the rest of the world. That being said, we thought we were gonna be really down with low attendance numbers, but in reality, we set a record attendance number of just shy of 600,000 people this year. Because of the extreme number of visitors this year, we couldn't reserve two good backcountry sites until mid-October. We knew the weather would be iffy this time of year. You never know in the UP, but this gave me time to prepare. Make sure your pack is adequately packed. Have your 10 essentials. Um, really go through your gear. Try to lighten your load. Um, take, a take your time to come to the visitor center. We're open seven days a week. There's always a ranger in there who would gladly uh, go through your gear with you, answer any questions you have about trails. I think where there's trouble is when you're not prepared. You know, you always want the best trip possible, but somebody could get hurt. The weather really truly could take a turn. Um, there's so many different variables out here. Some of the things you should expect are, are some muddy trails. A, lo a lot of times we'll find uh, the wet leaves on the rocks become very slippery and those can be, can be a hazard. So really take your time, watch your foot placement, dress in layers, make sure you've got a few good layers on with a rain jacket on with this weather. Even though it's cool out, drink plenty of water. Make sure you stay hydrated and focused on the trail. Elizabeth's daughter, Nevaeh, and her friend, Cindy, joined us on our adventure. 
and I'm not the only one here who hasn't camped in the Porkies. I have been here before, but not to camp or anything. We just went to like Lake of the Clouds, like tourists, and just looked at it. We pulled up to Lake of the Clouds just before noon on a Monday. But we are packed and ready to go. There's no turning back now. I guess we could have, but what fun would that be? Ready or not, hey? Yeah, holy smokes. <laughs> yeah, are you guys sure? <laughs> We started our hike at Lake of the Clouds and hiked down the North Mirror Lake Trail. Over here apparently. Mm -hmm. Yeah, over this way. Watch the Mirror Lake. As we got deeper into the woods, it didn't seem to be raining as hard, or maybe we were just used to it by then, and the five miles passed by in a blur of mud, water, log bridges, and fall colors. We saw, what, a handful of people today, and other than that, I mean, we, we t obviously we talk as a group, but for the most part, we're hiking with our own thoughts, we're listening to the sounds out here. I can't recall exactly what I thought about during this part of the hike. Probably, did I pack enough batteries? As my first GoPro battery died halfway down the trail. Thankfully, Nevea had a GoPro too. The most memorable part of this trail was the gorge and steep Rudy Hill. A friend of mine had warned me it was a butt burner. Whoa! Oh. Just take a bigger step there. <laughs> Now, big step. Finally, we arrived at our first campsite on Mirror Lake. Home sweet home. <laughs> Before I could even get my bearings, Elizabeth and Nevea had their tent set up and Cindy had a fire going. We were all soaked. We well, got the boots off and everything already. Oh yeah. <laughs> I need some hand warmers and I just need a minute to get warm. The clouds moved out and the skies turned blue by 4.30 and now it was easier to appreciate the beauty of Mirror Lake. So glad it's not so freezing. It's just a beautiful spot in the heart of the Porkies. There's uh, some, some very large white pine and hemlocks around there. So it's definitely, you're, you're camping in the old growth forest there. We do have three cabins for rent on the lake, a two, four, and eight bunk cabin that come with rowboats. Mirror Lake is also 200 feet higher in elevation than the lookout platforms at Lake of the Clouds. Makes sense with all the hills we climbed up and down. Next order of business was drying everything out and dinner. Red curry rice. Because they are quick, easy, and lightweight, we brought dehydrated meals. I didn't have much hope for flavor, but they were actually surprisingly good. Maybe it's just because I was starving. We just saw it? No. You sure? Next up, collect enough firewood for the evening. We found a dead tree. Yay! <laughs> and we think we're going to be able to dry our boots with this. <laughs> dry it? Yeah, of course. Huh. The inside? Right. I have a marshmallow stick for you when it's time. Would you? How do you feel about that? Want a marshmallow? Nah. <laughs> and filter water from the lake to fill up all our water bottles. Be nice cold water to drink though. Once all our basic survival tasks were done, it was time to relax. 
and there's nothing better than being able to sit around a campfire at night and just giggle and laugh and have that little bit of playfulness that we don't always get in our regular day to day and connect. Aww, isn't it beautiful? It is really pretty. In this moment, I was deeply happy that the rain didn't stop us. The weather had turned. We watched the sunset giving way to a cloudless, starry sky. Now I would love to say we slept soundly through the night. Last night, you know, we, we were woken up by wolves snarling in the distance. Morning came and we all survived the night. And our food bag was safe and sound on the bear pole we put it up on the night before. Coffee time. <laughs> so every last camper that comes in here has questions about bears. It's, it's kind of a special thing to see one. Uh, this year we had no reports of bear-human conflicts. We very rarely do. We do provide bear poles out at the backcountry sites for you to hang your food on. There are anywhere from 12 to 40 bears in the park at any given time. We also do have a couple small wolf packs in the park, but if you were to hear a wolf or see a bear track in the mud, it's actually uh, a special thing. We didn't see any bears on this trip, but Elizabeth saw one on her very first solo backpacking trip in the Porkies. And it wasn't very long into my trip that I like came up over this hill and there was a big bear in the trail and he was just staring at me. And every time I tell the story, our, lo our little moment of staring at each other gets longer and longer. It truly probably was like a half a second, but I'm gonna tell you it was like 30 seconds now. Like that's what I'm up to. <laughs> um, but so we had our moment, our staring moment. He ran, I ran, and I ran, and I ran until I couldn't run anymore. After coffee and breakfast, we packed all our gear, threw our packs back on, and began our hike to our next campsite near Shining Cloud Falls along the Big Carp River. The weather on day two was beautiful, and the trails were tough. The Correction Line Trail is a hilly, swampy, sloppy, well, you get the point, it's a difficult one. And I can't begin to count how many tree root stairs I've climbed up and down. This one was a really hard hike, but a little bit of excitement because you don't know what's going to be around that next bend, but you know whatever it is is going to be great and you're going to get through it and it just gives you all that much more to talk about at the campfire that evening. So I look forward to all of the twists and turns and whatever is coming next. Wow. The biggest thing on the trail to remember is to follow the blue blazes. Going around water and down trees can make it easy to become disoriented and lose track of the trail. A lot of inexperienced people came out this year, didn't talk to a ranger, didn't stop at the visitor center and get a map. So a few people ended up off trail or on the wrong trail, maybe a bit off more than they can chew. Um, plenty of people go for walks and hikes in their home neighborhoods for exercise, but maybe take uh, for granted what rough, rocky, and muddy trails can be, especially near dark with the elevation here. And since June 22nd, we've had 40 rescues that our staff have been a part of. My biggest goal these three days was not to be the 41st person <laughs> rescued. So far, I had made it to our second campsite unscathed. 6.6? 6.6 miles, four hours of hiking. Nice. That's a good day. Yeah, I like it. To experience more of the park, we had decided to camp at two different sites, both of them Elizabeth's favorites. Big Carp 7 site was everything Elizabeth said it would be. It's just magic. This was one of the sites that I had reserved on my solo hike and I didn't know what it, I was coming into. 
there's a waterfall, it's down this big ravine, so you're kind of really protected from like the wind. And I knew my friends Cindy and Nevea and you would love it. Like it is, it is a really neat site. Anytime you can be by water too, I love being by water. A, you have something to drink, <laughs> which is really important. Um, and B, it's just calming. So same routine as the previous night, set up our tents, collect water and firewood, start a fire, eat dinner, and relax. It's hard to explain how gratifying and relaxing it is to only worry about the basic necessities, food, water, shelter, fire, and to be completely cut off from the outside world and its distractions. There is zero cell phone signal out here. It's, it's just a fun experience to share with people. These are the things that we will remember and talk about now for years to come, you know. This trip in particular, we're gonna talk about those gale force winds and just the crazy rain and the fact that we were like, okay, here we go. The option to not even go never even crossed any of our minds and I think that was just awesome. And maybe we all were thinking it, but nobody said it out loud. I'm glad we didn't even think about quitting because here we are now and it's been such a wonderful trip and even through the rain it was it, it was memorable you know it's, it made it an experience that we'll never forget. Day three we woke up to the sound of the Big Carp River rushing hot coffee and crisp fresh air. We didn't dilly-dally this morning because Carl Bonac called for rain to start at 10 a.m. and we had a six and a half mile hike out to our end point where we left my truck. Everybody in? Woohoo! Let's go. <laughs> Today's trek took us along the Big Carp River to Lake Superior, and we passed by a few of the Big Carp cabins, which I definitely need to stay in one of these someday. To me, this was one of the most beautiful spots we saw on our trip. The last trail we hiked was the Pinkerton Trail, and of all the trails we hiked, this one was by far the easiest. This trail leads to those big carp cabins if you also feel you need to stay in them someday. Um, it was very difficult for people to get reservations this year, so if you weren't able to get here, start booking, start planning now. Uh, you can make a reservation six months in advance because I'm, we're anticipating another busy season next year. I just love the break. Life gets so busy sometimes and it gets so loud and this is just a nice way to pause and reset and focus on the things that are important. My friends, my family, this is a really nice quiet place to do that without all of the, the noise. I just like getting out and away from like reality, especially right now, just to like forget everything and just worry about walking and looking at the colors and everything. It's just like a good way to de-stress. And I just think it's so beautiful. And it's challenging and it's fun. Like I like how hard it is sometimes. It feels good when you're done. <laughs> I don't go backcountry camping to sleep in the woods or to hike or because I enjoy carrying a pack. For me, I go because I get to put on a pack that's 35 pounds with the essentials in it that I need for a few days and I get to exchange that with the weight of the world and kind of leave everything at home and um, set out into the one of the UP forests and take a break and get still and um, just be. It's, it's wonderful to be present for a, a minute and let go of technology and really kind of get in touch with who you are, disconnecting from the outer world and stepping into your own inner world and being able to just be grateful for all the things that we have for all the days that we're here and then I get to spend it with the most beautiful humans and that just makes it all magic. When we came out of the woods I didn't know what day, what month or even what year it was. I became so immersed in the experience, I forgot I was technically working and forgot about the cameras and charging GoPro batteries. I may not have captured everything I wanted to, but the experience was everything I wanted. 
For some, the Porky's Wilderness is a peaceful place to connect with nature, while for others, it offers a thrilling challenge to hike and push one's limits. I found it a mix of both, and I can't wait to do it again. Well, that's it for this week. Be sure to check out 906outdoors.com where you'll find the 906 fishing report, TV6 weather, shopping, and more. Thanks for watching, and I hope to see you next week right here on Upper Michigan's very own Discovering 906.7.